you doing? Welcome to live stream number 143. Today's Friday. We made it, folks. It is April 6th. It is 2018. My name is Lars Christensen, and uh, this is, uh, well, we're just getting together here to chit chat a little bit about uh, Fusion 360. Trying to add a little bit more value to uh, your experience with, well, with that program. Today is Friday. That means CAM. If you're not into manufacture or uh, machining, CAM, CNC, then uh, today's live stream is probably not for you. Just take the start your weekend, man. Do some relax with the family, all that good stuff. But if you are into CAM, well, then uh, the next uh, few minutes might be uh, might be helpful to you. Today's topic is undercutting with CAM with Infusion 360. Um, so that is like lollipop cutter style uh, to reach areas that you, you normally uh, can't reach. Uh, this is one of those uh, requests I got from, from one of you guys. Like you sent me a file asking me how the heck you do that in Fusion, uh, if you can do it, and yes, you can do it. So let's jump into uh, Fusion 360 here. Um, and um, you will see uh, we have a model of this little uh, this little part here. Not anything uh, super fancy, um, but um, you know um, that's okay. It's Friday. Uh, but what we have, if you go into uh, the display settings, and um, we go into the visual style where we normally associate it with edges. If I change that over to uh, maybe wireframe, let's go to the top view here. Um, then, well, actually, maybe it's better if we go and say wireframe with hidden edges. Uh, then you can see that this pocket here is actually um, it's a little bit tapered um, from the from the top and, and outward. It's a little bit. I don't know. If this is is great. This is, I'm not often in these visual styles messing messing uh, around here. Um, another way, if we're jumping out of cam, we're going into the model environment. Then we can do like a section view and what i'm talking about is this one here so uh the top is 30 millimeters wide and the bottom is like 35 so it's tapered uh through here so the question is uh can you do lollipop undercutting uh in here and yes you can uh i have here a uh, the last tool path here is with a um, a lollipop type cutter um and it will cut uh, all the way through there and make, you can see probably from the bottom is actually maybe, is this better? We can kind of see from the bottom that it's tapered up here and that cutter will do that. Uh, so that's the, that's, well, that answers this question. That was that live stream, three minutes long and we can end it. No, um, but I wanted to show that you can do it and the tool path to do it with is <laughs> the contour tool path inside of, um, inside of the 3D tool path, the, the, the contour tool path here. And I think that that was one of the, one of the questions was a little bit of confusion about these uh, different uh, tool paths in here. So mark that down. If you ever got to do any undercutting, so when I'm saying undercutting, I mean that the cutter is actually going to start small and then it's going to cut bigger uh, as it's going through here, um, that that would be the contour tool path to use where you can use this type uh, of, of end mill. Um, I, I want kind of like going from, I will, I will go from the, from the end to the beginning, kind of like through, through, uh, this one here. It will take that you have to go in and create a, um, a lollipop cutter. We, we call it lollipop because it's kind of like looking a little bit like that. Uh, you will see here, I have a lollipop mill in here, uh, created. So, um, let's, let's get to that point and kind of like get through that first how you create those tool paths, and then we can maybe just kind of like go through some of the other prior tool paths before that, uh, because I think people kind of like, like to see, um, you know, we can continue the trend of this week, kind of like how I got to the end last, last tool path. But what we get to in the end, uh, if we simulate this, and I'm just gonna skip actually um, this finishing tool path here. If we go to simulate this, and uh, turn the stock on. I like to use the wall paint size stock here. Um, and if we take it to the last tool path, 
See the red line working down here? It's kind of like doing all the calculations. I'll turn the tool pads off too, by the way. So um, at the end here, we have the outside milled, and then we kind of like have a straight going all the way through here, and the last tool path will, whoops, oh, that was not what I wanted to do. Oh, now I went all the way out. Isn't that typical? Um, the last tool path will then be this lollipop cutter um, and will it catch up again? Three, two, one, there we go. Um, when I hit play here, this lollipop cutter will, uh, let's go look from the bottom here, will kind of, as it's getting in there, it will kind of like grow um, and machine all the way to, uh, to the end here. Maybe I hadn't prepped this very well, but to answer the question, uh, that will, will cut that shape um, all the way down there. I should have cut it a little bit further through the ball. But um, so that is the contour tool pad. Now let me just talk quickly about 3D tool pads. Um, because I think that that's maybe there's a little bit of confusion there first of all so we can kind of like eliminate some of this stuff um, In here when you go to 3d uh, tool path, I normally always use the adaptive and you can see that that's my first tool path in here Anyways, the adaptive now when it comes to all the rest of them and, and I understand I totally understand why somebody gets a little confused about what should I use whenever because there's so many different ones and how how do you pick um Generally speaking, I have three tool paths I use in here as at least my first go around. The first one is parallel. If you're looking at the little fly out window uh, right next to it there, this is really good on kind of like, it's almost like a facing operation, flat areas, injection molds, cavities that is kind of like somewhat flat. Uh, the parallel is, is really good. Um, the contours, the next one's very steep. If you're looking at the little picture next to the fly out again, steep um, areas. And if you look at the model we have on the screen um, here, it's very steep and you'll actually see the contour is used throughout that. So parallel for somewhat flat areas, contour for more steep areas. And then the last one I use is the scallop tool pad. What kind of is taking the outer edge of whatever you, you're milling and collapsing towards the center this one and the parallel is normally kind of like a um i always call the parallel that's a mold maker's favorite because that's probably the first ever 3d toolpath created it's kind of like just going back and forth where the the scale of toolpath has a uh, more like collapsing from the outside in uh, if you have any delicate features inside of of your mold think about like we just had Easter. Think about like the, the, the chocolate mold for an Easter bunny. If you had to machine that, the scale up would kind of like start from the outside shape of the bunny and kind of like collapsing in and be good at getting the details like the eyes and nose and ears and things like that. So that's really the three tool paths that I normally go to. Parallel and contour for steep and then uh, the scale up. And the contour tool path is the one that specifically comes to like this undercutting that you see in here. Um, that that's where I used that. Now, um, the other thing that, that happens with this one is um, when it comes to uh, the tool. So let's go into the tool library. And you will see that I had this lollipop cutter. Normally when you see me do live streams, I normally like to go down here and select out of the tutorial folders for either inch or metric. Um, you will see that there is no uh, lollipop cutter in here. You have to create it yourself, but it's super easy. Go to the document folder where you have that file and uh, go up here on the, the plus for a tool. And um, then on the, the first tab is kind of like general. So you can kind of like put in a description, vendor number, like if you bought the cutter, wherever you cut it from, uh, bought the cutter from. We didn't put a link in if you have a website. So like if you bought these lollipop cutters from, you know, MSC or any type of place, you could put the link in. Now you can just click on that. But the, the whole, um, you know, core of creating this is to go into the cutter tab, 
select uh, what kind of end mill you want, in this case, a lollipop mill. And then you can, of course, specify the diameter, length, all these things. That is whatever cutter you kind of like have, how many flutes are on it. Normally, there's a lot more flutes on a on a, these lollipop cutters, at least the ones I've used. You can do all this material. Um, you can um, go in with feats and speeds. Again, I normally recommend the feats and speeds from wherever you buy the tools, at least to start out with. Uh, so, so be aware of that's where you will create that lollipop cutter um, that you see that I have in here. And literally all I did to this lollipop cutter was that. I, I did exactly what I just showed you and I tweaked the numbers in here to, uh, uh, to, to what that, uh, that was. That's really all that happens with the, with the lollipop cutter. So with that, um, because I only spent 10 minutes and kind of like answered the question, undercutting with cam, how can you do it? I thought, why don't we just somewhat quickly run through the, the, the process to, uh, to get to, to that point? Um, and I want to cover this first because that's kind of like the title of the video. Um, but the, it would actually normally, I think for me personally, that would be the last thing I would do would be that. Uh, that. So I'm just gonna go in here and select all these and uh, and hit delete and delete them all out of that. Boom, now that I've gone. Uh, my setup here kind of like refers to a live stream I didn't do uh, too long ago. Um, if you have to do one or a few of, of parts like this, many times I would actually have squared uh, the block up and, and maybe even grounded to size before I started doing the delicate milling. That way you can kind of like hold on to, to this area. Instead of always starting out with the raw block you got from material factory in, in your mill, I just sometimes, it's just easier for me to break it down. Square the block up, finish the outside. Uh, it might take a few minutes longer sometimes, but um, then you can concentrate on kind of like the heart of the part, the milling at the end. So like I said, I will normally do a, a 3D adaptive um, so let's select that uh, to rough uh, the material out of. Um, select some kind of a flat end mill. This here uh, comes right out of the standard tutorial metric library uh, right here. And with anything I normally do when it comes to, ad, uh, to, to 3D tool path is I just hit OK um, and see what I get. Oh, I'm going to select the tool, sorry. Uh, hit OK and see what I get before I go in and change all the different uh, tabs. Because if you go in and change all those different tabs, that's always when you lose track of what the heck is what. And, and then when you got to go in and adjust it later on, it's, it's, it's confusing. So I would go in and just select the tool, hit OK, see what I get. And then you can start adjusting different things. So for example, if I was holding on to this area, maybe I only want to machine down to this surface. Well, that's an easy fix. Now I can go back in, hit edit, and that is the height tab. And that goes now to the model bottom. Remember, I did a live stream on the height tab. Start from the bottom and work your way up. So if I select the selection and I select this face, then I just eliminated that the cutter is cutting past uh, that area. This is kind of like how I, in my brain, I work uh, through this. It might take a few steps longer, but breaking it down into kind of like different steps makes it a little bit easier. Another thing about the adaptive that if you're not too familiar with it, um, start out with the recommended feats and speeds uh, that you get from your cotton manufacturer, but be aware that you probably can push these a lot harder than the recommended feats and speeds. The recipe with adaptive is that you can normally go a lot deeper, so change your maximum step down to like, you know, maybe like 25 millimeters. The whole, the, the whole recipe is the optimal load right here. So the side step over. Uh, so set your feet and speeds to so the recommended feet and speeds. Go to about the, the depth of, the length of flute length on your cutter. Um, or at least longer than you're normally used to on the maximum roughing step down, then play with the optimal load to find out how hard you can push, uh, you can push it. Uh, so when I go in and I simulate this right now, let's just 
let it calculate. Uh, when I go in here and I simulate this tool path, um, you will see the two millimeter optimal load is that step over uh, you see right here. Uh, and and what, what Adaptive does is it's assuring that it will never ever do more than two millimeter step over, ever. So you don't have to worry about like if you ever if you are old as me and I've done run like older mills like suddenly you're machining and suddenly the cutter would like hit a lot of material and the cutter would snap. That's the trick with uh, adaptive is that that two millimeters man you can assure that that will never go any bigger than what you set that to. So this way you can play with that optimal load and and look on your mill and you can kind of like see. You know how hard you're pushing it start out with a one millimeter if that's it just make sure that you don't start robbing with the tool i mean the a cut a carbide end mill as we normally do this in steel it wants to cut material it don't want to kind of like you know just uh feather over it so make sure at least a millimeter and then start increasing that till you start you know and you can start playing with your feet and speeds and that's that's really uh kind of like the trick um to uh, to, to to do that um, now, another thing I, I realize here as we're roughing this one out here is that if I edit this tool path is that also um, I had stock to leave turned on automatically in adaptive. Um, you could turn off the one on the bottom in this case here if I just wanted to finish that um, that with the adaptive. So that would be uh, to rough all the material uh, away here. Now we maybe want to start uh, doing uh, some finishing operations. If I just go in here to the simulate and hit the little go to the end, uh, you can kind of like see we got a, a nice staircase here that will be good for for my 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 finish. And actually, I actually normally do semi finish and then finish when it comes to to this. And this will be ball end mill. And again, this is a steep drop down, so parallel will not really be my my favorite. My favorite would be the contour tool pad. That we're also going to use for for the other cutting undercutting other cutting <laughs> undercutting so um select 2d contour um so then here we normally go to a ball end mill i suppose let's pick the six millimeter ball end mill whatever kind of like float your boat and then again remember just hit okay and see what the what you get start there and then and then and, and this actually this is actually a very nice tool path right out of the gate. I haven't adjusted anything. Um, the, the biggest thing, this would be a semi finish for me. So I would actually go in and all, because this is considered a finishing tool path, there is no stock to leave, but I would actually add a stock to leave in here. Um, and I don't know how much it would leave. Um, yeah, maybe 0.1 might be, be okay. Maximum step over. One millimeter, maybe you go a little bit higher, 1.5. That's kind of like wh whatever you, you want to play with. Um, and then um, I would do another one of these. And you could just right click and do create derived operation here. So you get kind of like whatever you tweak before coming with to the second one. And then in that one, we could go in and turn stock to leave off because it's going to be a finish. How small your step over is gonna be, that is is really up to you. Um, I would go, you know, that's time and money. I've talked about that before on these on these live streams. Um, that you know, the finer you go, uh, the the longer it's gonna take. But of course, a nicer uh, a nicer surface uh, you're gonna get here. Of course, this is also gonna take longer to simulate um, and and everything like that. Now. For the um, for this here for the internal, I want to show you a couple of a couple of tricks here. So first of all, I would probably drill a hole uh, through the center here, just to get the center material um, center material out of here, right? Um, and um, here I want to show you a little trick that you may or may not know. But um, if we go into the drilling operation, um, and I just selected the biggest drill that is in the tutorial library in this case there was a a, a 10 millimeter drill it's 118 which means you need to spot two but i lazy man skipped that but in the real world i will definitely make sure that i that i, I spot 
Um, oh, and by the way, if we go back into that tool, now I have two of them, but um, if you select that tool, of course, you could go in and right click and you can edit that tool. So if you had a 12 millimeter or something like that instead, um, select that tool. Um, now, when you get to the point where you got to select your geometry, uh, by default inside of the drilling operation, it's looking for a face. And we normally select uh, we normally select the center of a hole or face or something like that. Did you know that actually if you hit the drop down, you can also select points. So it doesn't have to be uh, just faces. And now where if I select points, uh, oddly enough, I drew everything up on the origin. Now I can't pick anything here, but you can actually go over in this tree over here and you can actually find in the model itself. I can select the origin right there. So that was maybe a little bit of a tip. Um, I don't know, you tell me. Uh, in the uh, d depth, I'll turn the drill through the center and uh, add, uh, uh, I don't know, 10 millimeters, a couple of millimeters to make sure we, we break through. I would definitely, normally I would go to the last tab and change, I did a lot of chip breaking. That was kind of like my favorite. Hit okay. And, uh, and we drilled that hole uh, all the way through. Now, here's an interesting thing I want to just make sure that we all agree on and we are comfortable with. If I go in now to simulate this, let's simulate. Um, and let's just click on this chip break. Uh, down here is that red bar that will kind of like do all the calculations. So here you can see our, our semi, this is our semi finish here and see how long it's slowly is moving. The reason it's moving so slow right now is because it's actually gonna display my tiny small step over in here. And you can kind of like see that that's gonna happen right here um, on the screen now. And, and that's cool that, that Fusion will show you the finish, but <laughs> it's only cool the first time. Um, and many times when you are working in CAM, you go back into the simulation, if you're like me, 200 times. And then suddenly this is not cool to sit here and wait for. So actually what I will normally do the first time, I will for sure simulate through everything because simulation is the view into the future. Um, but then after that, I will actually go in here and many times I will like skip selecting that, that second one. So because when you watched it once and you confirm that that, that is, is, is good, I don't need to see that anymore and I'm okay with just letting this process a little bit faster. I know that that second one I didn't pick, that, that, um, that that's in order. Now, one of the reasons that is very important to simulate, right, is because if I go in here now to this drilling operation, and I know we didn't spot, but uh, if we had pretended we had spotted, um, notice this, notice how the tool in here turns red. And there is actually also a little line down here uh, that shows that there's a collision with the stock. I'm like, what the heck is, the, uh, is that about? And, and don't ever, and I seriously, don't ever ignore red tools inside of Fusion unless that you are willing to sign off on it. Um, and the reason for this collision was because I wasn't thinking when I selected the drilling point um, on this, I was so fancy showing you we could select a point. Well, since I selected a point, Fusion never had a chance to, to take anything into consideration. So on my Heights tab, it, it says start at whole top. But because we selected a point, it doesn't know where the whole top is. So we'll have to go in here and, and, and change whole top to like, for example, the top selection here or the top of the part. But this, doing this is like, especially it's Friday, it's 3.30 p.m. here in upstate New York. You're on the way out of the door. You just gotta finish that hot job. That is the mistakes you make, right? You didn't get the right depth and now the drill just, you know, rabbits right down to try to get all the way down to, to the bottom. So, so you need to just, you know, have a cup of coffee and just make sure that uh, when you go in and you do, uh, you know, these type of simulations that uh, you promise me that you take the time 
to let the the simulation kind of like go through make sure uh that you you play through this and make sure that you don't uh, have any uh any uh collisions the development team at autodesk uh at the KM team they are very very aware of this and 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 they have like a policy that that you know collision detection is not just a nice thing to have that is uh, absolutely urgent. So they will do their best to flag you uh, for these things. And, and just so you know also uh, that if I selected that long operation and I, I hit simulate uh, in here, that I think it's on the, on the info page, as it's now calculating down here, notice how on the info page in the simulation, that this thing will actually update on collisions. So this one right now is actually uh, verifying um, the, the the collision as it's going going through here, and will show you uh, if it had uh, collisions in there. So this is is kind of like things that you know in, under your standard simulation tab, uh, you have the info. Um, you also have the statistics, of course, that will give you the machining time. But I just want to make sure that you're aware of some of these uh, small things in here. Okay, so I would drill my hole through all the way there. Then I would um, probably also rough out the pocket. Here I want to show you another little trick. And and I do this, I do this a lot. Um, I would make I mix 2D and 3D toolpath. So to rough this pocket out, you could go in and select uh, the adaptive clearing for 2D. Um, we could select that um, 16 millimeter flat end mill again. And uh, I'm just gonna take you through the process of how I would work with this. So I'll select that. I'll select the top contour because that's the smallest one of the two. Um, and then I will tell it to, um, then I will tell it to go all the way to the bottom of our model, right? That should take us all the way to the, down to the bottom and hit okay. Um, and notice how I get a little red, a uh, little yellow mark right here. And if I hit the little plus sign next to it, notice it says none. So I don't have a tool path right now. This is empty. Um, I wanted to take you through this because when I program this part, that's exactly what happens that I'm like, Oh, I didn't get anything. And, um, you know, if, if you're fairly new to fusion, um, or maybe not, even if you're routine, this kind of stuff you know, what the heck, why wouldn't it give me anything? And my, my thought process was either there's a problem with my boundary, but I mean, if I'm looking from the top down, uh, this 16 millimeter end mill will surely fit within here. Now I know that I have some stock to leave on it because it is an adaptive. So I would go in and try to turn that off, though I know it's only a half a millimeter, uh, but that's one way uh, to check it. If it still is there, the other thing that happens with adaptive is on the, um, on the linking tab and it helixes in, it's end up with a helix. Well, if you change that to a plunge, so it just drops down and we just took care of the center with that 10 millimeter end mill. Uh, if we just plunge down, uh, now you will see that we actually do get that tool path uh, showing up in there. So that was kind of like my troubleshooting to find out why I didn't get a tool path. Now I'm gonna go back in and turn the stock to leave, uh, to leave on and that will, um, that will give me that. Um, <clears throat> so now we kind of like rough that section out there. Now, don't forget, I talked about total flute length that inside of the 2D adaptive, you can absolutely turn on multiple daps in here right so now we could also do like we did before like 25 millimeter step downs and we will get uh you know multiple step downs through it's kind of hard to see but through the through the step and sex there, sections there and then in the end let's get back to uh wrap this up with the lollipop cutter so like i said that would again be the contour tool path so select the contour tool path i'm going to select uh the lollipop cutter we did uh before, um, again, let me just recreate it if somebody came in late. So I don't have a lollipop cutter in the 
tutorial library that I normally steal things from. So I'm going to go back into our file. That is the file we're working on. Click on a new tool in here. And uh, then on the cutter section, you can, of course, fill out all the other stuff I talked about before. Go in, select the lollipop cutter, select um, your diameter, select the, the shaft diameter, what in this case here is pretty narrow, uh, change the length, whatever, whatever, whatever you need to do to all these different settings compared to what lollipop cutter you have. Um, hit OK. And then I'm just going to hit OK here because that's what I normally do with 3D Toolpath. See what I get. Um, and what I get here is uh, it's the same one we got on the outside. That's not what I want. I want the internal uh, section in here uh, machine, right? Uh, now, what I did was I went in, right-clicked on that Toolpath. Go into edit. Go into your to your boundary. We have never we have never selected anything. It's under silhouette. And I did a live stream on what these different bounding box silhouette selections, what they all mean. But silhouette is the default, and silhouette really means just like if we shine the light, a flashlight from the top down on top of the part, whatever you can add a uh, tool path to that is steep vertical, that will be that. Um, and that will be that surface because remember it can't with a flashlight it actually can't see the undercutting section so that's why it's not picking that uh, that's what silhouette does but if I change that to selection and then instead select a, a selection area within I want that tool path uh, and hit OK uh, then you will see that now it's not silhouette anymore. Now we actually get, you know, that tool path to machine that out. And that will do the undercutting, like I showed uh, in the beginning. Now, of course, with these lollipop cutters, <clears throat> I mean, this one is pretty winky. Um, <laughs> I would probably, this part might be a little tall, but but I guess that's, that's more practical. Um, in, in the practical sense of things, but this will be the steps. And of course, in the in the undercutting here, I will go in and I would of course play with the step over. Have I would I, in here? I would for sure have a semi finish and a finish. Um, also, the depth of the model bottom. You could also add whatever um, the radius of that uh, ball is in here. So we make sure that it comes all the way through. The original file I showed you uh, did not did not have that. Now you can see the toolpath come, come all the way through. So that was about 33 minutes of me kind of like taking you through uh, undercutting inside of the can. And I, I hope this kind of stuff is, is, is helpful. Um, I, I, you know, um, for some of you guys, you guys do this, this kind of stuff all day long. Uh, it, it maybe is a little bit more natural, but I mean, like, just like when we model up this box earlier in the week with the O-ring and the lid and everything, many times just seeing somebody else going through the steps, I've always found that uh, extremely helpful. It's Friday. Um, got about 100 people in here. It's absolutely awesome. I appreciate it. If you like this stuff, thumbs up. If you don't, I want to be honest, thumbs down. Next week, no live streams. I am headed to uh, the headquarters at... Autodesk in San Francisco. I spent some time with some different people there, uh, but we will definitely be back uh, the week after. Um, my email address is down in the description of this video. As always, last.christensenautodesk.com. Any future topics you would like to see, send them. Um, yeah, if you're watching the recording, thank you so much. Hope you have an awesome weekend planned. And if you're in the chat, I'll come in and say hi to everybody. Take care, folks. And uh, have an awesome, awesome weekend.